I am extremely concerned about Donald Trump's declaration of a national state of emergency for the purpose of circumventing Congress in order to build a wall on our southern border, at least a partial wall, in order to appease his political base, who he knows is very, very, many of them disappointed with his performance as president. And if he does not do something about building that wall, because that was the central promise of his campaign, he would lose tremendous support going into 2020 election, and he would have no chance of winning. So he made a very, very partisan political decision. And when he did, he violated the Constitution of the United States, and he set a, an extremely dangerous precedent. And I want to spend just a couple of minutes to explain this to you. The Constitution states, no money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. That's Article 1, Section 9, Paragraph 7. Nowhere in the Constitution is there a national emergency clause that lets the President spend money not allocated by Congress. Trump and his supporters argue that the National Emergencies Act of 1976 grants him this authority. But all of the declared national emergencies under this act in 1976 have been funded by Congress. This is the first declaration of emergency that not only hasn't been funded by Congress, but deliberately circumvented the authority of Congress in order to enact it. Plus, this is the first one, the first declaration of national emergency that authorizes the militarization of the U.S. homeland under executive order. I don't hear anybody supporting Trump's decision talking about this. In effect, under this declaration of emergency, the United States is under military rule. The homeland is under military authority. This is a, an order that is given to the military to take specific action regarding activity within the continental United States. If President Trump or his surrogates wanted to do so, they could enact all kinds of martial law and other draconian militarization on the U.S. homeland under this declaration of emergency. Everyone agrees, left and right, no matter what their political bent might be, that under a declaration of emergency, a president has king-like power. So, in the first place, this declaration of national emergency is unconstitutional in that it bypasses Congress and attempts to spend monies from the U.S. Treasury that the Congress of the United States has not appropriated a clear violation of the Constitution. Secondly, it gives to the U.S. military whatever authority the executive branch of government may choose to give to it on U.S. soil in furtherance of this declaration. I haven't heard anybody in Trump's apology camp that is even talking about this. They seem to be oblivious to how dangerous 
this is and the precedent it sets for potential martial law and the abuse of military power within the United States that this declaration opens the door for. Believe it or not, when I put this on my Facebook page over the last couple of days, one well, in the first place, you wouldn't believe, oh yeah, you would, the reaction I got. I actually had, whenever I, I made this notation clear on my page, I actually had some supporters of this action tell me that they welcomed the militarization of the United States. Any, any, they said anything Trump had to do to further his agenda was okay with them, even if it meant martial law. That is how blind many of these people have become under Donald Trump. All of that is very problematic, but that even, I think, is not the worst of it, if that's possible. The bigger problem is this. How you feel about the wall is immaterial. Whether you're for the wall or against the wall doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Trump's declaration of a state of emergency to build it is blatantly unconstitutional. Trump made the declaration to circumvent the will of Congress for the, fa for the purpose of saving face with Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh and to prevent mass defection of support among his base without which he has no chance of re-election in 2020. Judge Andrew Napolitano said straight out that Trump's declaration is illegal and that the court will doubtless rule it unconstitutional. We better hope he's right. And here's why. If Trump gets away with his declaration of a state of emergency to bypass the will of Congress, if the courts let this stand, you can take this to the bank. Take it to the bank. And remember, you heard it right here on this day. The next Democrat president will declare a state of emergency to make our guns illegal, claiming that gun violence constitutes a state of emergency. If a Republican can bypass Congress to declare a state of emergency to get what he wants, Democrats can bypass Congress and declare a state of emergency to get what they want. And that Democrat president, whoever he or she is, will use Trump's state of emergency as the precedent for their state of emergency. Whether he intended to do it or not, Donald Trump has just expunged the Second Amendment of the United States and has stripped Americans of their guns. I'm not the only one that sees this. Many Republican congressmen are already warning about Democrats taking advantage of this precedent and doing exactly what I just said. And when that day comes, ladies and gentlemen, remember this date, February 15, 2019, the day that Donald Trump expunge the Second Amendment and stole your guns. It will be Donald's Trump, Donald Trump's culpability of opening the door to this 
egregiously unconstitutional action that will lead to the worst possible scenarios that we can imagine as free people. Representative Chris Stewart, Republican of Utah, said Thursday that while he supports increased border security, and so do I, President Trump's decision to declare a national emergency to secure funds for his long-desired wall along the southern border is a mistake. Quote, I think President Trump is making a mistake by declaring a national emergency in order to increase border funding, close quote, Stewart said in a statement. Whether the president has the authority or not, it sets a dangerous precedent and places America on a path that we will all regret. It deeply worries me, still quoting the congressman, it deeply worries me that a future Democrat president may consider gun violence or climate change a national emergency and what actions they may take, he added. That was reported in The Hill on February 14. Democrat House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has already, already made it clear since Friday, she has already made it clear that if Trump's end run around Congress via state of emergency declaration stands, the next Democrat president will use the same tactic regarding gun violence. She's already committed that will happen. Trump and the Republicans control the entire federal government, including the federal purse strings, to build a wall for two full years. Why didn't the GOP Congress appropriate the funds to do so then? And why didn't Trump declare a national emergency then? I am telling you, this is nothing more than political posturing for the 2020 elections. And the problem is, Trump and Pelosi, Republicans and Democrats, are destroying our Constitution in the process.